the many controversies of Michael Schumacher. How is Max Verstappen more similar to his dad's old teammate than to Jos the boss himself? Admit it, when you see Max drive over Lewis at Monza in 2021, or take out Lando in Austria 2024, if you're old enough, you had to think of his dad's old teammate. That win at all costs attitude is so shoomy, it's scary, as is the aura that Max seems to currently have on track. At Silverstone, he was not quite in the race most of the time, and yet he almost won the thing. He seems to intimidate the grid in a way that Lewis never quite did. Yes, Hamilton holds the records. He is statistically the GOAT, but you have to go back to the days of Michael Maker of Shoes to have a previous example of a driver being so dominant over his team and so intimidating over the grid. And that made me think of Shumi's heyday, a man known as much for his racing ability as his knack for being controversial. So here comes eight of the many Michael Schumacher controversies. Number eight, overtaking on the parade lap, British Grand Prix 1994. You don't overtake on the parade lap or formation lap. It's stupid and will get you the wrath of the FIA, even if your surname is Schumacher. But what if it's all part of your master plan to get so very, very deep into Damon Hill's psyche that you could beat him, even if he had the much superior car? What if your mind games could get the admittedly decent Brit to start second guessing himself and have him wonder what you could possibly be up to and if you even had a limit to your madness? In my opinion, that was Schumacher. Not content to be master on the track only, he also needed to be the mind games master as well. And at the British Grand Prix 94, he went next level in that category. Arriving at Silverstone in 94, the German had won six from the previous seven, despite his Benetton Ford being seen as inferior to Hills Williams Renault. He was also 37 points ahead of the Brit at a time when only the top six scored and you got 10 for a win. Hill would win the race ahead of Michael, but then the shoe would be DQ'd for failing to serve the penalty he received for passing Hill on the formation lap before the race. Schumacher was penalized for the incident by lap 14, and he ignored it. Then he was black flagged, and again he ignored it and continued racing. The powers that be were furious and gave him a sizable fine and banned him for two races, which his team promptly appealed and he was back racing. When asked why he overtook Hill, Shumi replied and I quote, he was so slow, I did not want to break so hard. End quote, later that same season, he called Damon Hill and I quote again, not a world-class driver. But more on that later in this list. Number seven, pushing Frentzen off, Canada 1998. Michael Schumacher and Heinz Harald Frentzen were two promising German youngsters in the late 80s. Frentzen dated a blonde beauty called Corinna, who ended up married to Michael Schumacher. Frentzen was in line to join the F1 grid and in sports cars, both were brilliant and Heinz seemed to have Schumi's number. And then Michael got his break in Formula One and completely outshone his wife's ex. Canada 98, Michael was pushing for the win in a Ferrari and Frenson was in a Williams, the defending constructors champions. Wikipedia describes the incident as follows, and I quote, coming out of the pit lane on lap 20, Schumacher shot across to block Frenson for turn one. Frenson steered off the track and onto the grass and spun into the gravel at the end of turn one to retire from the Grand Prix. Williams team principal Patrick Head, furious at what had just happened, went to Ferrari team principal Jean Tote to have strong words with him about the racing incident. We will do everything to get him thrown out of this race and no, we will not tolerate it." End quote. The maker of shoes was given a 10 second stop go penalty for making Heinz look like a very expensive lawnmower but still went on to win the race with poor Frenson retiring. Number six, Austria 2002 team orders. Most fans, I think, dislike team orders. I wanna see Lando and Piastri dice it out. 
I want to see Russell and Lewis battle for, t for the win. I want to see Red Bull sign a driver from the same planet as Verstappen. Back in 2002 though, team orders were very much frowned upon. Schumi was tearing it up and had won four of the year's first five races. Race six in Austria, he was running second to teammate Rubens Barrichello. But the Ferraris were so dominant, surely it wouldn't matter if Rubinho won one, would it? Apparently it would. Ferrari ordered Rubens to let Michael pass, which he did at the last corner of the race, for Schumacher to win by 0.182 seconds. On the podium, the German was booed, and he felt embarrassed enough to urge Barrichello onto the top step of the podium, which of course didn't mean anything, as Michael still got the points, the FIA though got really peed off and outright banned team orders for a while, also fining Ferrari for breaking podium regulations. Number 5. Monaco 2006 messing up Alonso's quali. Schumi was never afraid to fight dirty. Ask Hill, Villeneuve, Hakkinen, Montoya or Alonso. When a young Alonso took Michael's World Drivers' Championship away in 2005, we knew the German would fight back hard in 06, and at Monaco he showed how low he would go. Alonso was ahead in the title battle, but Michael had just put in a great lap in qualifying, right at the end of the session, and was top when the following happened, and I quote Planet F1. Apparently he, and I quote, locked up the front and went wide at the penultimate corner and came to a stop blocking the track." In quote. Schumacher effectively then thus effectively parked his car in Raskas and Alonso couldn't finish his hot lap. It seemed like the dubious tactic had stolen Schumi pole, but the stewards were not amused. Schumi's lap times were all deleted and the man was forced to start from the back of the grid, said former world champion, owner of the second greatest mustache in Formula 1 history and father to the man that beat Lewis in equal machinery, Kiki Rosberg. It was the cheapest, dirtiest thing I have ever seen in F1. He should leave F1 and go home. Number 4. Winning a race while in the pit lane. I remember this race as a kid watching on TV. Honestly, I thought it was flipping brilliant. The way Ferrari outsmarted the powers that be. But what do I know? Pretty cheapy again, but in 98 this time. Hakkinen in that most beautiful silver McLaren was just ahead of the shoe in the title race heading to Silverstone. Mika started well and was comfortably ahead when the rain came and he slid and damaged that car. After a safety car came and went, Hakkinen spun again and Schumacher, who was never troubled by a wet track like us mere mortals, disappeared off into the distance. So what's the problem? Well, apparently Michael had passed Alex Wirtz under the safety car, which is very illegal, and he was given a stop-go penalty. There was some confusion though, as the team were unsure whether the penalty would be added to Michael's time or he had to come in and serve it in the pits. It was the final lap. He pulled into the pits and served the penalty. One thing though, he had passed the start-finish line while in the pits and had thus won the race before serving his penalty. McLaren were furious and made a lot of noise. The FIA somehow sided with the German and his one and his win stood. Number three, almost killing former teammate Barrichello in Hungary 2010. You would think Schumi and Rubens would be close. Teammates for years, the Rubens had contributed massively to Schumacher's Ferrari success. One would not say that on the basis of the 2010 Hungarian GP though. Schumi was busy with his very poorly thought out comeback at Merck and Rubens was driving for the old enemy Williams. Michael was running 10th and in the points. Rubens was closing fast though and he had better tyres, as Planet F1 put it. And I quote, the Brazilian tried to make a pass down the main straight, but Schumacher shut the door, squeezing Barrichello into the wall. The Williams driver nearly hit the concrete wall at 200 miles per hour, end quote. Barrichello very impressively still managed to stick the move and pass the Mercedes and managed to grab the final point scoring position. Schumacher was given a 10 place grid penalty for the next race for his reckless driving and said Barrichello afterwards and I quote, I am lucky to be alive, it was a go-kart maneuver. If he wants to go to heaven, in the event he is going to heaven, I don't want to go before him. Thank God I was lucky the wall finished 
where it did because I was millimeters from it." End quote. Schumacher would later apologize for his actions, but I don't think he got many birthday presents from old pal Rubens after that race. Number two, Jerez 97. Ah, yes. The title decider between the Shoe and the Villeneuve. Last race of the season. Shumi's Ferrari and the Williams's of Villeneuve and Friends and managed to set the exact same qualifying times for the race and there was a single point between Villeneuve and Shumi in the World Drivers' Championship. Michael was leading the race when Villeneuve tried to overtake him on lap 48. So he went full Verstappen. Schumacher plain and simply turned in on Villeneuve to try and take him out and win the title. It didn't work. Michael mistimed his misdeed and then hit the Williams side with his wheel, forcing himself into retirement. Villeneuve went on to nurse the damaged Williams to third and thus won the Drivers' Championship. The FIA though had had enough of the Germans' tactics and they officially disqualified him from the 97 standings, which really meant absolutely nothing, as second place mattered as much to Michael Schumacher as winning the World Cheese Rolling Championships would. Before we get to number one, some honorable mentions. Wanting to beat up Coulthard in Belgium 98. That is a meme worthy one. Belgium 98 was wet. Michael was the Regenmeister and he moved to pass Coulthard and somehow slammed into the back of the McLaren. Both retired and in the pits afterwards he stormed into the Scotsman's garage and may possibly have caused one of the most memorable pit lane confrontations in history. Returning to Mercedes after retiring. Man, I wish he never came back. The GOAT retired at Ferrari and Rolf Schumacher wearing a Michael mask returned at Mercedes. Enough said. Injuring his pit mechanic in a pit stop. Poor Nigel Stepney. I'm just going to let Wikipedia do the talking on this one. Quote, at the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix, Stepney was injured during a pit stop for Schumacher's car. This occurred when the German was signaled to depart while Stepney was still detaching the fuel rig. He suffered badly damaged ligaments to his ankle. End quote. Drum roll, please. Number one. Taking out Damon Hill to win his first World Drivers' Championship. Australia 1994. After a horrible start to the season which had taken Senna from us, Schumacher and Hill had battled for the title throughout the year. Hill had the better car but Michael was living in Hill's head rent free and had that Senna win at all cost mentality that we all now hate when Max Verstappen shows it. My my, what hypocrites we are. Michael led the title race by a single point, quoting Racing News 365. Hill closed in on second place. The order held until lap 36 when Schumacher lost his Benetton at the East Terrace corner and hit the wall. As Schumacher returned to track, Hill tried to overtake him. Schumacher did not yield to the Briton. He steered in, touched Hill's Williams car and dropped out. It seemed over for the German who was forced to watch the race unfold nail-bitingly from behind the barriers. Hill hobbled to the pit lane in his damaged Williams car. End quote. Hill was forced to retire as well, and Shumi won his first driver's title. Nigel Mansell would go on to win that race, which would be his final Formula 1 victory. And after all that, in summary, I remain as much a Shumi fan as I am not a Verstappen fan. Maybe it has something to do with my age. Maybe it's because Max seems to act with absolutely no repercussion, taking out Lando in Austria and getting a slap on the wrist penalty that didn't even cost him a position is one example. Very much like Michael rarely also seemed to be properly, properly punished for his actions. What can I say? Call me hypocrite, I don't know. But to each his own I guess. Maybe I would have been less harsh on Verstappen if he drove for McLaren or just seemed to be less of an ass. Would have liked to see Max, Shumi, Senna and Alonso dice at the same age with the same cars but that, of course, remains the stuff of my greatest dreams. And on that very lame bombshell, we reach the end of yet another video. Thank you for watching. It would be greatly appreciated if you would share the video and consider subscribing to the channel. God bless you and goodbye.